think it's Jacob. Huh? <laughs> shot out of the way is hilarious. <laughs> I think it's just Jacob from Open Doors. Okay. See, I was right. Awesome. <laughs> Hi there, guys. Welcome to today's thrilling staff meeting. Under the general heading, if you want to wash any clothes here, do not let your clothes hang out in the washing machine. It gets smelly and gross. Please keep the washer door open when not in use. It's starting to smell like damp ass. The reason for this is a warm, moist environment. They grow things. This is simple knowledge that you should carry with you through life. Leave the door to your washing machine open. The dryer, you can do whatever you want. But don't leave clothes in there overnight. They get funky. It's gross. And it isn't just gross for you. It's gross for everybody because it's smelly. Question. What? Is there already a one-hour rule for washing machine? It is for my yeah, because yeah. it's that condition. Talk briefly about the MD trip and who will remain here. I'll be here. <laughs> and Paul will be here. Rebecca will be here. Everyone else is leaving. Access to members and non members. This is a thing that has been mentioned about a hundred times outside of staff meetings, but not actually in meetings. Oh, thank you. How much help do we give non-members? Introduce them to the opportunities, but it's up to them to proceed with their project. You cannot offer them a guarantee for success, and they must understand that. We have to manage expectations. Failure is very much an option here, in fact, for Anybody who's ever followed any one of my projects, failure is usually how we get around to getting it right. Or if you followed Ed projects, it's pretty much the MO. How long should their tour be? A private tour should be no more than three stops. If they want more than that, it gets tricky, especially if they haven't signed up yet. If a member is going to sign up and wants a more in-depth tour, it's appropriate to do that. If they have previously signed up and missed the full tour, it is again appropriate. Stick to the areas that interest them. It is best discovered by talking to them briefly before you start. A lot of people don't want an hour and a half tour if they just want to know how to use the workshop. Also, it's a massive suck on their time. What should you do when a person comes in for a tour outside of tour hours? Uh, what? We don't answer the question. Oh, no, we get three answers. Okay. If it's a weekday, we try to give people tours when they stop in during the week. You may be asked to help do it. If it does not include any demonstrations, It is not to include any demonstrations you cannot do yourself. Uh, what if it's a Saturday morning? They can briefly see the area that interests them, but they should be told that tours are at 12.30. What if it's a Saturday afternoon? Saturday afternoons, we give tour to anybody who comes. People frequently do not seem to understand that the 12.30 tour is not an open house, nor do they understand it was one tour. You may be asked to help give one. It does not include any demonstration you cannot do yourself. I put that up because a lot of people wanting to give a random walk-in to the tour and then do high voltage. They want to see the whole show. So I'll put the on Saturday. Yeah. Um, none of these apply for like VIP stuff. None of you do VIP tours. Yeah. Um, do you give members staff email addresses? No! That's why we have a have us contact you form on the website. Hit me. What are four hours? What do you mean tour hours? It says outside, if someone wants a tour outside of tour hours. It means outside of the 12.30 tour outside. Oh, okay. Do you give members staff phone numbers? No! That's why we have a company line that actually works most of the time. It's working, right now. It's working now. Back up? Okay. Yeah. Cool. How long do you help a member? Apparently you don't. Fuck those guys. <laughs> oh, no, there's a second. No, there really is no... The, the formatting's changed and you're messing me up here. Are they being safe? 
If a member is having trouble learning how to use a tool in order to be safe for themselves and the equipment, you need to be patient and work with them. Do they have specific questions? Could they, could they answer these questions on Google, or does it require an expert? You need to help find the line between the two. If a person has several questions to get going, it's appropriate to answer them. If they have questions at every single step of the way, it's best to refer them to the internet, the IRC, Google, etc. It is not your responsibility to look up ways to do their project. It is not your responsibility to look up ways for people to build their project. Does anybody not understand that? Remember. The line, yeah, I know. The, the line is, we are here to help people. We are here to help people learn and build and explore and grow and change and rah, rah, rah. We are not here to build shit for other people. We don't do that. This is a huge thing because it ends up being a monumental time suck for us and that is bad. And they try to guilt you into it by saying that they don't know how to do it. I don't know a lot about woodworking, so could you just help me and do this? They're here to learn these things. We're here to help them learn these things. We are not here to actually do the work for them. What if, the mem what if the member they need is not in the building, or more so lives outside of GR? Non-local staff members are not available to members. They may choose to answer questions in the IRC on their own time, but all of the remote staff have enough to do already. By being in the building, you are a resource available. For those that who are not, even if they simply are not in the building on this particular day, the members need to come up with their own solutions. How do I know the status of a member? If you are working with a person you've not encountered before or are not familiar with, it is good to verify their membership status. The easiest way to check is their the easiest way to check. The easiest way is is the wooden issue. To check their ID card, make sure they've signed a waiver. We are shorthanded in the office and cannot do all of these steps for you. You may get a person who wants to confirm their project as possible before they buy a membership, which is totally cool. But don't assume the, don't assume the person in front of you is wavered and paid. Always check. We've had this happen a few times recently where people have come in and built projects and not only not been wavered, they haven't bothered to pay. People are sneaky bitches. How does a member sign up? Does anybody not know how a member signs up? It's in the jury. No. No. No, because we would like to make sure that they're signed up and they get their member card. Take a copy of the How to Sign Up for Membership form and try it out. Be familiar with it. The staff alone cannot sign up all members, especially on Saturdays, because we get flooded. I think you want to do the next section. Thank you. Okay. Well, don't fuck off. She has to get props. She has to get her stuff. Gets, I don't get props. I get a poorly written thing of bullet points. And, and it's in red, you know, so you know it's serious. Super Jeffrey Clubs. You're all familiar with the donation receipt form. <coughs> in the top corner, there is a colored box, and it has things for you to initial and date. You actually have to initial and date them. This is an audit trail. This means that I know who touched this form and did what. We are introducing a step that you have not seen before, so to accomplish this, follow me. There's a field trip <laughs> in a staff meeting. Follow her. I am. to change sides. Hold on. When you have filled out a donation receipt or a member has handed you a receipt, you right now put it in the red bin. Before it goes into that red bin, I have a step that I need everybody to do now, and that step is to scan it because we have lost receipts. So you take your form. If it's something stapled together, I don't need the whole thing. I just need to see the first form so that I can chase it down. It in. This is set up to copy by default if you hit all services, and then scanning, you get to the scanning section. You see how it has lots of choices, one through seven? Choice number five says donation receipt. Click it, hit scan. 
This goes into a folder just for donation receipts. You are done now. Wow. You then initial the form and put it in the red bin. Any questions? So assume you want to see the part that has like the address and signature part, not the part that has initial date. Right. This, that that's a real mail different. form. But if it's this one, I just need this part. If it's multiple pages, okay. you can put them up here. And if you hit two-sided, you just scanned all of it. So if you have like six pages, you can put all six pages in there. It's a really big one. That way, if this physical piece of paper decides to go take a hike, I still have these. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Yay! Infrastructure! Good for you? Yeah. Are you satisfied? Yeah. So, Jerry, he wants to see if he can supplement on this. Yes. Um, I thought he was mine today. He came in. I'm not sure. I get him after. See what you do. Okay. Hi there guys, welcome to today's Captain's Blog. It's 12 11 hours on Tuesday, April 19th, 2016. And everybody came back in here. Are you done? Does anybody have any questions? Go. There is a box on the autopsy set next to the viewer mail set. It has a clipboard with viewer mail donation forms on it. It does occasionally happen, but I am not here for viewer mail, and nobody fills out the form with what we got in viewer mail that day. Somebody needs to pick up that slack. Everybody is present in the room when viewer mail happens, so I'm announcing this now. Okay. Who wants to be the alternate? Cool! You're, you can't. You didn't right, 99% yeah. of the time. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll try and remember to pick an alternate when you're not here. It's pretty um, rare that you're not here for me. Yes, yeah. but it has happened twice. Do you have On that note, we have had quite a few receipts get filled out where, like, under name, it's just, like, dude who came in. Can be better than that? It's making donation receipts when people want them a nightmare. The more I'd rather have more information than none. What if they choose not to get their name? They just want to they don't know it. If they're not going to fill out the form of all of the information, I can't take their stuff. Just let them know it's an IRS requirement, and that usually helps. Any other questions? Cool, that was easy. Now we can go play with fun. I can't believe it. Laser gun sucks. It's just, it was working. It's just it's my own one. Laser gun sucks. For the sake of videos, can we get a couple of recent videos working again? Because right now, the last thing you either they're wonky or not. If the 3D printers aren't working, or it really, if any piece of equipment isn't working, it would be really good to let me know. The 3D okay. printers are working. Because... Is that the point of the ports? Oh. And it's a different port is a great way to let me know. But I had no idea that the 3D printers weren't working. I didn't either. It's just like if you guys have no toilet paper and you just sit and hope that someday toilet paper arrives, and nobody tells me it's not coming. Also, your legs will fall asleep. I didn't interpret that literally, but okay. Okay, thank you, all of you. You gonna hang out with me? You can bite them. It's even worse focus. I didn't bite you. That's, that's the signal. Oh, that's not from the camera, that's no, from That's from going through three processors. Yeah. Don't why, why are you putting dogs on the table? Because the people want to see the puppy. Hi guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. It's time for viewer mail at 14.01 hours on Tuesday, April 19th, 2016. And we got a box. From Denichi, Shop Towers for Batman. 
Thank you, Danici. A frequent flyer here. Who we love and adore. Yeah, I'm going to use quite a few of them today. Because my project of the afternoon is currently both so we can sell it and raise some money. To the human, Chris Bowden. Please find enclosed in this box the following four items. An orange shirt with the quote, This is fire orange, you asshole. This is a quote from a January blog when you are painting the red Tesla coil power supply case. Okay. A roll of trifoil toilet paper for when you are taking nuclear shits. A roll of not another a-hole toilet paper for the assholes in your life. You're going to need a lot more than one roll. Lastly, a roll of toilet paper with lipstick kisses on it for when you need to have your ass kissed. Don't worry, it's not real lipstick, so it won't come off on your ass. This concludes the items that were shipped to my house in error instead of the geek group. 73 is from KB3PXR. Also, I'd like to point out, he typed this on an actual typewriter. He loves this typewriter. An actual, honest to God, old school typewriter because the, the letters are all jaded. KB3PXR, this is heavy, and it's from McMaster Car. Good thing it's called from McMaster Car. Who's name? They're ordered by Mitch. Oh yeah! Good job, Mitch. Supply is your source for high quality e cig products. At Quince, you'll find over 80 different flavors of e liquids, from exotic fruit flavors to traditional tobacco flavors, and everything, everything in between. between. There's an e liquid for everyone. Quince is also the exclusive supplier of the Chris Bowden Signature Series. Not sure which flavors for you? Check out one of the Flavor Flights for a sampling of different flavors. All e-liquids have customizable nicotine. nicotine levels ranging from 0 to 24 milligrams, so you can control how much nicotine, nicotine you're vaping. 
Quince is an authorized Inakin dealer, and they carry a variety of e-cigs and accessories. Quince has everything you need to vape exactly how you like. Quince vape supply is exclusively online, and they offer priority mail shipping for all domestic orders. So head on over to quincevapesupply.com. That's Q-U-I-N-N-S vapesupply.com, and start vaping right today. My dad, I drilled and tapped by hand all of the holes in a plate that had 500 and change of those fucking ball transfer things. Oh my god, that sucked so bad. That was, that was not fun. Yeah, well, I was about 14 and my dad owned the shop, so I got the gig. Hey, when you're 14, any job's a good job. No! No, it's not. <laughs> Say it was his dad. He wasn't getting money. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're shit all Let's just sleep. He says the word job, but he wasn't getting any money. Sleep. Yeah, it's amazing what happens when you take your leverage away. It's really easy. I was like, I might come out. Yeah, it's really easy because you got five pounds of metal on either side. Yeah, that's a <laughs> rather significant tap handle he's rolling there. It's usually the one I grab too when I'm doing heavy steel. Bigger is no better. Where did we get the uh... Oh, shit, okay. Everything makes sense now. I'm glad I could help. Photovoltaic assembly factory. Of course they have silicon cutting fluid and flux for photovoltaic. All right. Okay. Yes. We all turn it off. Here's the thing. Look at it here. In yeah. your vertical, uh, okay? Uh, and then hold it vertical as you come around really and make sure you're vertical here. here. And come the back here and look at your vertical. Place. Then hold it vertical as you come around and as long as you're vertical at the 290s, you're cool, okay? Because it's... You're not square. That's going to weeble a little bit on your first... Because you're on turn. the taper. Yeah, you're still on the table. So it's going to weeble a little bit, but the idea is to keep that to a minimum. And at the very beginning, don't back out and in and back out and in at the very start. Get it, get it started. Like right about there. And just keep checking it. 90 off. Now I'm starting. Someone tag in. Did you get it yet? Don't push the ball. It's going well. You want to try it? Thank you much. Now you do. Make it like this. So the big excitement of the day was I carpeted a boat. I don't know how many more I got. But yeah, what the hell? I said it's going well. I didn't say I was making you it. Had, you had two in, and now you got none. It's still going well. I didn't say it was going You've forward. Made, even I had a bolt in there, and now, now there's no bolts in there. The difference is, you're good at doing it once. I have to do it four times. I ain't as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was. Works for me. This side came out of base. The boat's in good shape. The boat? Now. Yeah, now. It wasn't when I got it. Well, since you're out of the way, I can trim this side now. Batman's getting me harder. Yeah, and you know, he'll come back someday with hardware for you. Half inch screws are not and I'll be out of your way. I only, I only have three you know. of them left, so you can do that seat for sure. All right, I'll, make, I'll figure this out. Oh, yeah. There's a telephone. Communications device. This 
boat was nice and, nice and seaworthy when you first got it. <laughs> Stuff of fucking nightmares. <laughs> Well, uh, was that documented? Because that's like yeah, that yeah. There's, there's there's video. Just just how much we've done to this poor little boat. And the sad thing is, none of that is really a solvable <laughs> change. I don't know. It floats now. Well, yeah, but that's the basic requirement for a boat. Yeah. You know what I mean? You haven't done anything beyond what is expected of a watercraft already. There is that. But when I got it, it was it was not so happy. It was a puddle. You want uh, secure this while I. Fight my way through. Just keep the goop off everything. Uh huh. Which I forgot to note before I put my hand in the goop. <laughs> yeah. Don't put your hand in the goop. All right. And he's gone. Uh huh. And he's gone. <laughs> There's a hole. Yeah. You can come around from the front and see him actually. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Give me the purple scissors. Okay. Thank you. There, that can come out. All right, this side's trimmed. A little squeeze and a little love, and she's groovy. You can you can come back to the side. Cool. So that's. That's both sides. I still got to trim the back, but that's it. Oh man, if the motor ran, and this thing's legal. This hole's registered. It's legal, ready to go. Did it come with you? Oh, it can be legal in a day. All right, you're on chair. I'm going to the back. Okay. And I'll do the the aft trim. Unless I got this thing, so we never No, we didn't get them all legal. I thought this was one we did, though. I scraped all the numbers off when I took it home. I thought they were ugly. Mm. Oh, I see where you're going with that. What it needs is a jack. But... <laughs> It'll make great blood. It don't make a good move if you're right next to the front end of the wood. It'll be fine. We'll only go down to about six inches. And they'll do it slowly because it's already happened and it was mildly entertaining. <laughs> so we'll drop very, very slowly. <laughs> Start the ridiculously slow di dipping mechanism. <laughs> Give me the purple scissors. I'll give you the purple scissors. Here, Oh, they're under my, my rear. Yeah. There's a hole over there somewhere. Focus a bolt? Yes. It's all about the right amount of leverage. And he, and swearing. Oh, there's lots of that. But you have to do the right amount of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Batman knows the right amount of swearing. Chris, it's Catholic. Chris is throwing schmoo. It's carpet schmoo. If you'd like to help, yeah, we at least have the vlog camera out now, so it'll be I'm highly entertaining. Right. Oh, it no, no, no. no. He's already curb stomped her once. <laughs> She's a lot safer there than where she was earlier. She knows what she's getting into. <laughs> really? See, that's what I told you. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> I told you. You threw a boomerang. I didn't even see her standing there. <laughs> Bullshit. That's because she's not standing Take a look at my view right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not in the boat. He's up the boat's anus, so his view is not exactly broad or covering. Captain. Yeah. Permission to set the seat on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Permission granted. Oh, oh wow. I just want to kill it with fire. It's just so much. All right, Melissa. Yes. You can wrap this around the back now. You've got enough there. 
and that can fold over and it's just good. Came I also trimmed the back here. If I was keeping it, I'd put a nice piece of aluminum trim here. Hey, Batman, you got any more of that aluminum angle? Like a foot. No, I need... And a six-inch section, because you made me cut it twice. I need like... <laughs> I need like six feet of it. No, I ain't got six feet of it. If I had six feet of it, I'd, do, I'd trim the back. Ninety percent of my metal stock are like little two-foot cutoffs. Well, we can do it in like eight pieces, then. No, because I don't have six feet of it. Ah! Ah! Oh, yeah. I have like I have like a sample select. You know when you go to Home Depot <laughs> and they only have like that little bin of metal stock that doesn't that's do pretty you much any what, good anymore. Except, that's exactly usually what I have. It, uh, but you don't want to get rid of it because the moment you do, you'll need a two-inch yeah, piece. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. They're, they're not two. They're, they're they're at least two foot. You know, a couple inches been trimmed yeah, yeah. off. Sometimes not very square. Difficult to hit the hole when you can't see it and it's covered in fur. <laughs> It was funny the first time. So. I said there was fur in it the no. first time. Ah, third time. I've removed the fur from in the hole. Does not make it in. You are not allowed to make fun of somebody for overplaying a joke, you fucking towel. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't used a towel joke in a while. And thank God for that. In a while. Jesus. Ugh. That wasn't a joke, it was an insult. It was a bad joke. <laughs> Is it right up there with a blue waffle? What's going on with the towel? It's a South Park reference. Oh, Towelie? Yeah. I know that much of the reference. That's, that's it's all. Warm. Warm. Yeah, it's about to get warmer. Just, just sitting right on the crushing for your money. Because Jesse trapped it in here, actually. I can get out. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, yeah. when Jesse gets done suffering the torture of the two seats, yeah. I will reward him with letting him play Brown Road. I'll even let him borrow my hat. Okay. Oh, who do I get to fuck up? Jerry. Jerry. Again? The boy yep. doesn't like me. Well, he's about to like you a lot less. Why? Because he, he has to task? secure his area, he hasn't done it. Jesus. Mm. Yep. I got a shovel. Oh, I'm going in. <laughs> I just went in like another three feet. Jesus, how deep is it down there? Say hello to Mr. Dumbley for me. Depends on how much lube you give him. It can be deep. Uh, fuck you. I don't and know. And your bullshit. Batman. Fucking. Mm. I don't. Something's going on with these seats, man. I'm failing. Take those off. That's not the problem. I think the problem is where the seat wants to be happy, the bolt doesn't go through. Oh, do we need to like drill out those? Uh, I think they need to be reamed a little bit. Reamed a little. We can ream them a little bit. Ream them. In which case, I will take this seat off. No, I won't. Ah, I, I, I can take it. Well, actually, whatever just you need. Me, do it to both. And make that. Both. Make that. Hey, I'll make make, make that hat. I got you, mate. Now watch him. It's funnier. Though. Oh, okay. Sonic shows. I haven't, but you did one here. Oh, uh, yeah, the Rubens tube works. Cool, because, you know, fire truck making fire with yeah, all yeah. Fahrenheit 451 on it. <laughs> Please tell me you caught the reference. Somebody caught the reference. No? There's a no. Fahrenheit 451. I'm all alone. That's a book. Yeah. 
But you remember what the fire department did in the forest? It wasn't Orwell, was it? No. no. Orwell was 1984. Yeah. yeah. Somebody's not dead yet. I don't know. But you know, the, you know what the fire department did in Fahrenheit 450? No. They burned things down. Usually of people who were against the government or something to that effect. I have bad uh, memories of the book. Fire department. All right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, this, that was the whole premise of the book. Almost done. Okay. So. so hey, power. Here's $10 for the donation. Okay. Ed is donating to his own fundraiser. Ed has done that a million times. It needs to happen, so. Finger a boat before? <laughs> yeah. Her name was Helen. <laughs> place where the bolt wanted to be and there was a place where I needed it to be and they were not lining up with the other, so. All right. Man, if I had a little aluminum trim. Tom! You can have a little aluminum trim, but you can't have all I, of the I aluminum exactly trim you need. I exactly a little bit of aluminum trim. What you want is a little more than that. <laughs> what do you got? I told you I have a Give me what you got. And can we buy that at Central? I don't know, maybe. He's, he's more from he's more a Padnos guy. Their aluminum is a little weird. Padnos doesn't always guarantee. Essentials <laughs> kind of the same way with their their, their aluminum. Is yeah, if I had. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> I need eight feet of this, and my whole world would be glory. I could make this so pretty. Because, man, you just put that in there like that. Oh, shit, yes. Oh, wow. What? The toilet seat that tells you how much weight you lost after you take a dump. Oh, that's <laughs> Somebody's um, making millions of that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You can now full gates, trim off the last few of and stuff. It's going to get pulled in. And here... What we do is we put glue down in here inside and hand me the plastic clamp down there, one of the plastic ones. No, the big no. ones. They're gone. What? The big clamps you had. They're under the carpet board right there. Okay. okay. They're not actually you, you know how to use them like this, right? Pull them apart? I don't know if those ones these, right? Yeah, those. Neither of those. The orange ones flip easier. The orange ones flip easier? That's my cornhole. Yeah, I know it's your cornhole. They're gray with green handles. And they they're, they're, they're under the fucking carpet of wood. How many times are you going to say it? Alright, I don't even know if these ones do it. These ones do it. Okay. We're like going narrow one. No, these ones are too big. All right, hand me the. I need you already got that. The way you want. That looks too big. That'll do. All right. So we we group here. You gotta lock this. No, it'll. Uh, yeah, it's going the wrong way. Oh, I see what happened. Yeah, did miss the pin. Okay, so we goop the insides of this. We oh. put a couple of these in here, like that, just applying pressure, and then it'll dry properly, and that's as good as we can get without putting aluminum in there. Okay.
What if this is as good as it is? <sighs> Alright, that's that. We'll be back. That sounds way better. The last inch and a half of that looks okay. We'll just do first, more of that. First I was moving a little slow. It's a learning process. Well, that looks way more better. Way more That's better. That's lovely. Does. Oh. Doesn't it have a current adjuster? It's got a switch that says inch or yeah, current. Down, down here, down. No, it's just voltage range. Wow. It's just voltage. I thought it had a current adjuster. Huh. Yeah. Oh, which, how about that? I felt like I was missing a variable. <laughs> That's because I think every, every MIG welder I've ever used was probably 20 years this unit's junior. Oh, easy. <laughs> It's lovely. Hit or miss right now. <laughs> 